What is the scariest theory you know about? I saw one about the potential of a specific type of supernova that would essentially fire out beam of radiation, or some other kind of energy, if it hit Earth we would see the entire sky covered with auroras. This is the ozone layer burning off and the last thing we would see before we all die. Guess at least we get a pretty light show to end on. The butterfly effect kind of freaks me out because it suggests that every little action could be part of a series of events that leads to something much more impactful. For example I could drop a pencil. Which distracts someone for a few seconds. Causing them to miss the bus. And after a few billion seemingly insignificant events World War 3 begins. The possibility that I am just a brain in a jar and my entire life is just something my brain fabricated to keep itself entertained. Everything and everyone I have ever known is a figment of imagination. Every method I can conceive to prove this idea wrong is also just part of the dream logic my brain has created to make sense of the illusion that is my existence. Not so scary but some people say we are all dead now but our conceousness keeps repeating memories of our lives like an endless loop and it's the reason we experience deja vu sometimes. Fractalization theories. Everything that exists is a tiny part of a bigger thing. In a brief summary. Our galaxy is a part of space but is space a small part of something larger? Think of a smaller object containing its own galaxy. A speck of a rock may contain its own microscopic cosmos that we cannot see. It may be composed of its own organism smaller than a single electron and that civilization is more advanced than we are. We know all matter contains their own gravitational force but we don't exactly know why. Edit, its true name is fractal cosmology. The uncanny valley. You know. The sense of unease and discomfort you feel when you look at a near realistic animation of a human face. Like imperfect deep fakes or flawed CGI faces in movies. It implies that there might have been a point in our species evolution where we had legit reasons to be afraid of something that looked almost human. Underscore but wasn't he underscore. Us living in a simulation. The scariest part about it is knowing that we have absolutely no control over our lives and anything bad that happens is just inevitable. Something goes wrong and you try to learn for next time. Doesn't matter. It was always going to happen and no matter what. It's likely going to happen again if it happened the first time. The fact that anything bad can whenever and we have no control over it is the scariest thing. That if time travel is possible here or in any other of the possible universes. That this may be the least cruel that would still be self-sustaining in the general trend of time. The Holocaust may be less cruel than a universe where Hitler succeeded and purged impure and undesirables from the planet. Even among his own race. Hell. It may have been better than a universe where Hitler didn't do anything and without his success the general anti-Semitic and eugenically obsessed culture was allowed to meander on its own. Slowly choking out and murdering cultures in much larger and less newsworthy ways. The torture and enslavement. The endless illnesses and abuses. And the less fair attitudes we are seeing right now could very well be an improvement on a universe that would criminalize biological flaws and seek to only abuse criminals. The fact that if aliens do exist. They are either billions of years ahead of us. Or we are billions of years ahead of them. It would be virtually impossible for them to become sentient around the same time as us. Especially if you consider how old the universe actually is. The hypothesis that human life was seeded by another civilization. What if they come back? Space time is doomed. Donald Hoffman is a scientist who proposes that human brains understand and perceive nothing of ultimate reality because evolution selected for survival traits. Not traits which would enable us to perceive the true nature of existence. Much like a trash can icon on your desktop is a useful fiction that helps you use the computer. But there is no real trash can and when you drag and drop a file you aren't throwing anything away. The reality of programming language is behind the user interface. And binary behind that and physical electronic circuits and components behind that, etc. Hoffman goes on to argue that the physical space-time world we inhabit is such an interface and not real. Unlike the simulation theory. He argues that simulation theory always assumes base reality is still a physical space-time universe. Hoffman has many podcast guest appearances and a TED Talk. Edit, it's like Mario on the TV. Everything he does is contained within the game. So Mario's science might be discovering the velocity of a turtle shell and how it ricochets off of things. Pixels are his atoms. But no matter how well Mario understands his world. 
from within the game itself he can never know that he is actually Python code powered by binary powered by circuit boards powered by the developers etc. Our most advanced physics are no better than Mario's pixels. Trapped within the limited frame of his world. That the great biological filter is still ahead of us. And that humankind has no real purpose because it was destined to die like the millions of other species before. Regarding the great filter it could be anything. It could getting off the planet. Or not destroying ourselves. Or anything. But the presence of a natural filter would explain why we detect such few life forms in space. Let's just hope that the filter was make stupid cat videos and upload them and that we brilliantly passed because if not then there is very little chance for humanity to have a future at all. The transporter in Star Trek actually literally vaporizes you and then creates a perfect clone back on the planet or ship you are visiting. That means every episodes we see three or four different Spocks. Captain Kirks. Etc. That it is impossible to live in the now. There is a delay in what you physically feel and what your brains monitor because of the speed with which your nervous system transmits these signals. This makes the concept of now biologically impossible to grasp. 100 years from now the majority of us will be dead. We will just be another page in the history book. We may think that our life was very valuable. But we are just another century passing by. Just like how a lot of us don't think about how the 19th century is much. It will be impossible to remember all 7.5 billion of us living in this century. The next century will just remember the ones that help advance our species. Epstein's Island has a dump site for the victims. So I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. But I learned this in a class I took last semester. There's a theory that says that there is a point that no intelligent life can get past. No matter what they do. Diving deeper into this. Some people claim this is why we haven't found any other intelligent life forms. I think the truly scary part about it is that we won't know we are at that point until we are living it. That AI. Self-replicating. And immortal. Has a better chance of colonizing this galaxy that biological life does. Think about it. It took hundreds of millions of years for life to get to this point. From a ball of proteins to multicellular creatures to plants and animals, took an incredible amount of time. Back in the late 1970s. I was playing with computers that had 4K of RAM. 40 years later we have incredible computing power in the palms of our hands. Hundreds of gigs. And terabyte micro SD cards. Robotic manufacturing of everything from circuit boards to vehicles is the norm. Where will this tech be in a couple hundred years? Will AI be able to design and launch spacecraft that are capable of self-maintenance for the hundreds? Maybe thousands of years it would take to reach the nearest exoplanets? Once they arrive, will they be capable of self-replication? Machines don't need food and water. Machines aren't susceptible to disease or mental health issues. Machines don't seek power or authority and don't victimize each other for amusement. What if the purpose of human life in the universe is to facilitate the creation of AI and launch its spread into the wild? This could backfire, read the Berserker series by Fred Saberhagen for more. Forgive me for piss poor job I'm about to do describing it since I forget the name of it but I recently read here on Reddit that as humans have a defense mechanism where we can see something that is non-human but mimicking a human such as a realistic wax figure and know that something is off. The theory was that in our evolution there was a predator that could mimic being human that we had to adapt and develop this defense mechanism for. The rebuttal to this theory was that it comes from us seeing dead bodies, through sickness or disease and not blatant. Neanderthal murder or death from an animal, through our evolution and learning that something is wrong slash out of the ordinary and a cause for concern. Edit, it's called the uncanny valley. We don't know whether the universe is in a true vacuum, lowest possible energy state, or a false vacuum, a local low but not the lowest. If the universe is a false vacuum, at any point, at any moment, a quantum tunneling event could occur where that point spontaneously decays to a true vacuum. If that happened, a bubble would expand from that point at the speed of light that radically altered physics, instantly annihilating everything down to the subatomic level. Since it travels at sea there'd be no warning. No way to see it coming. When it reached us you'd just instantly blink out of existence. Even if we are in a false vacuum. Such an event doesn't become likely for at least 10 to the power of 139th years. But it could happen at any moment at any point. 
it could have already happened and the bubble could be heading straight for us. About to end us at any TI. That theory about what happened on the missing Malaysian flight. From looking at the evidence and the most likely scenario. That being the pilot committing suicide, people have been able to piece together possible scenarios that happened on the plane. One of which is that shortly into the flight. The pilot deoxygenated. The plane. And accelerated to a high altitude. Killing all on board very quickly. He then flew for hours and hours south before crashing the plane. It's scary to me because he would have been flying in an isolated part of the earth. With nothing ahead of him other than the south pole. That isolated plane. Flying in the dark. With hundreds of dead strapped in their seats. The nearest city. Perth. Is still asleep and only beginning to wake up. There is no one. And nothing. To think of that man. Flying with all those bodies in the dark to nowhere is very scary. So selfish. And cowardly. But also very scary. There was a very interesting article in the Atlantic about it. HTTPS colon slash slash www.theatlantic.com slash magazine slash archive slash 2019 slash 07 slash MH370 hyphen Malaysia hyphen airline slash 590653. The cabin occupants would have become incapacitated within a couple of minutes. Lost consciousness. And gently died without any choking or gasping for air. The scene would have been dimly lit by the emergency lights. With the dead belted into their seats. Their faces nestled in the worthless oxygen masks dangling on tubes from the ceiling. Thanks for watching.